Okay. It is so now we'll recording. meeting to order at 7.06 p.m. Are there any additions to the agenda? So um, uh, the, the, the idea that we were just talking about, Jason and I, in, in, um, about the possibility of um, doing a financial review this year rather than a full audit uh, in order to save a little bit of money. Um, so can we talk about that during the finance committee or should we make that a separate agenda item? Uh, that should be a separate agenda item because we did not actually discuss that in the finance committee. That's right. This was just something that I, I, I thought about over the weekend. So we'll put that on our new business at the end. How's that? Okay. Okay, cool. Um, review and accept the minutes of May 18th, 2020. Did anybody have any issues with the minutes from the May 18th meeting? Okay. I motion to approve. Seconded. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any uh, opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Then our minutes of May 18th, 2020 have been accepted and approved and uh, on to the treasurer's report. Yep. All right, so the um, you should all have access to the financial statements um, that were sent around by Joe. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, we did not have uh, too much discussion on these um, in the uh, finance committee meeting. Um, most of the, if you want to look at uh, the first statement, the balance sheet, um, uh, most of this is fairly standard. We are spending money as we operate the library. We are not bringing, um, well, I guess that's next. Um, our, in the statement of financial position, our cash went, our checking account went down because we're spending money. Um, our CDs continue to give us uh, a little bit. We didn't really acquire any assets. We're not doing a whole lot of uh, shopping for tangible items. Um, but uh, other than that, not a whole lot of activity on the statement of financial position, which is the, um, the assets and liabilities. Are there any questions about this statement? Okay. So moving on to the profit and loss. Um, you'll Notice again that the we don't we only have the uh, revenue that has come in the municipal revenue that has come in. So um, right now the only thing that we have showing up is Knox. Um, you'll notice in our year to year, uh, kind of like we we hinted at last month, um, and I apologize, but my second screen is off over here, so that's why I'm talking off to the side. Um, You'll notice that the gap between this year's uh, fees and last year's fees is, as long as we stay closed, going to get bigger. Um, so uh, one thing we did briefly talk about was how we had, we had wanted this year to kind of be a test of our, um, our fine forgiveness. Um, unfortunately, it, it's not going to be a very good test because we're not going to be able to sort out um, the difference in fines because of our beneficent policy and the difference in uh, fines because we're not really able to, to, to do much. Um, but uh, but we, we should expect the gap in fees to get wider, not only because of fines, but because we're not having anyone, you know, fake faxes. So this is not a huge chunk of our revenue. So this is not a problem. Um, not, it's not a big problem. Um, but but we are going to see this number be substantially off um, and increase uh, being so until things are back to normal. Um, so uh, so we do expect this number to to continue to grow um, in terms of the difference between last year and this year. Um, the thing, what else? What else jumped out at us from last time? Um, we are not uh, spending quite as much on things like office supplies uh, for the exact same reason. 
Um, but, but we are spending more on things like digital materials. Uh, so those are things that we've approved and so we know we're kind of coming down the pike. Um, so we are still spending on materials, but it's different materials than, uh, than things that we might be spending on otherwise. Um, other than that. I have a question about the museum subscri subscriptions. Yeah. Since the museums are closed, does, does that change anything? Anything that uh, was, like, uh, anything that came up at the, any of the subscriptions that expired at the end of last year, uh, I renewed some of those. Um, most of them though, I have not renewed for this year um, and may not. The the one the one exception there is going to be um, our uh, New York State Parks and Beaches. The Empire Pass is coming up soon, um, and that is one that I think it would be wise of us to uh, to renew. Yeah. So. Okay. That makes sense. Um, but and we pull that particular money from an one of our dedicated accounts, right? That's right. Yeah. So that that was um, that comes from a, uh, a bequest made to us in the name of Todd Pulliam. Um, mm -hmm. So I uh, I can reach out to um, to the benefactors there to the to the Pulliam family and just sort of take their temperature on I, I, if there's if there's no museum to go to for this year. Mm -hmm then I, I think it, it doesn't make sense to, you know, to do it. But that will extend the life of that fund. Mm -hmm. I, I would recommend if I would, I would prefer not spending over asking them to repurpose the money because that becomes more complicated. And I don't think we're at that point yet. Um, so... So I think fulfilling the mission like in, in coming years, I think would be good. I also wouldn't be surprised if they didn't want to put the same amount of money into, for example, more empire passes uh, just because uh, parks may be actually seeing an increased uptake. I don't know what the subscription is on the empire passes. Like, is it just one pass? Do we have multiple passes? We have multiple passes. The last time we did it, I think it was $85 each. Um, and we have two. Okay. Have we had any requests for them or are we just not? We haven't had requests for anything. So I, I you know, I mean, I, we'll, we'll get a sense of, of what the, um, and there, there was a time, I, I'll have to look into this, but there, there was a time in early March that, um, that the governor sort of threw up in the doors of New York State Parks and Beaches and everything was free. Uh, I, I don't know if that's still the case. Um, I actually bought myself one, Joe, yesterday because I was a frequent user of the library one. Uh, so um, we went to Thompson's Lake. You still have to pay. Uh -huh. It's $80 a pass. Yep. Um, but you can't, you can't like buy them now at the place. So I was a little annoyed. Like I had to do it online. I thought I would print it out and then they're going to physically send me one. Um, but for like the beaches and stuff now you need a pass or you need to pay. So it's not, I think now that we're after Memorial Day. You did this yesterday? Online, yeah. You just, you, just, you, you, you only had to hold out one more day. Well, I was thinking anyway, we're going to go a lot. We live so close that sure. we need sure. support. Yep. State, but. So, uh, good question. Um, are there any other questions about the statement of activity? So we are down on net revenue, but we're, we're not too far off where we were last year. So um, we, always, we always essentially run negatives until we start getting those big chunks of of money from the municipal, municipalities later, um, but uh, but I do think it's important to note that we're not that far off of last year um, at this point, which is which is good. So, are there any questions about the 
profit and loss statement. Okay, so let's go into the last statement, which is budget versus actual. This may get more fun as the year goes on. We'll have to see um, what our spending looks like. Um, and you'll see a lot of the same trends that we were noticing on the um, statement of revenue and expenses. Um, we expected to bring in a lot more in fees, taxes, uh, the book sales that we weren't able to have. Um, but then if you also look at some of our expenditures, we're also not spending as much as uh, we expected either. So uh, there are some things uh, we did discuss, uh, things like the copier expenses and, and stuff. Anything that we're renting, like the copier, even though we're not using it, we still have to pay the agreed on rent for it. Um, so I think that Joe was going to look into whether um, like auto insurance, a lot of auto insurance companies in order to like build goodwill are giving people rebates. We don't know if the person, the, the group that we're renting our copier from uh, is interested in goodwill by giving us a, a rebate for a machine that we're not using. Um, but, uh, but Joe mentioned that, uh, that he would check into that. Um, but other than that. It, 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 it turns out our Toshiba rep uh, has left Toshiba. Uh, <laughs> par for the course, um, honestly, par for the course. So uh, they're going to assign us a new rep and then that person will reach out. Um, and I will let you know when I hear back. Okay. Um, so are there any questions about the budget versus actual? I think that once we it occurred to me in the last week whether we wanted to revisit the budget um, in terms of trying to, to come to grips with the new reality. Um, some organizations that I'm working with, uh, especially ones that have missed their gala, um, I'm recommending that they, they go through kind of the, the, the budgeting process over again. Um, for us, I don't think that that's really necessary. Um, we were able to get our gala in. There are a couple things that are gonna be off, like our fees and the book sale. So, so we are seeing a little bit of a dent, um, but I don't think that it's, um, we, we don't need to do any substantial work um, in revisiting our budget. So if we wanted to, we could, but if we have more important things to do, then I don't think uh, it's a, a super high priority for us at this uh, at this time, especially since it looks like we're starting to phase back into opening up. Um, um, sorry. Uh, so does anyone have any questions about the budget versus actual? All right, so let's go ahead and we'll talk more about um, what we talked about in the finance committee later, uh, but let's go ahead and approve the statements for right now. Um, can I get a motion to approve the financial statements? Make a motion. Okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, second. Okay, Katie, thank you. Um, all those in favor, uh, raise your hand or say aye. Aye. All right, any opposed? and any abstentions? All right, thank you so much. Those are approved, Rachel. Um, and uh, I will go ahead and toss this back to you, Joe. Thank you. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back to Dan. Uh, and I'm gonna pass it back to you, Joe, with the director's report. There we go, all right. Just so, because we can. Yep, all right, so um, today was a good day. Uh, we opened back up today uh, exactly three months after we shut the doors. Um, it was, uh, I think, for, I can speak on behalf of uh, Anne and Joanne and myself uh, when I say that it, it was, it was a little bit of an emotional day. I know that it was, um, uh, it was really great for each of us to, to, to be in. Um, today went very smoothly. Um, the policies and the procedures that we laid out that were, you know, that guided uh, how we went through our day, how we 
uh, uh, moved about in the space. Um, uh, they all worked pretty, pretty, pretty well. Um, we're still getting our flow uh, in terms of how to divide up the work, uh, how to um, create the workflows that we need um, to get done everything that we need to get done. Today was probably um, an unusual day. Our poll list, for example, was uh, five times longer than normal. Um, so things like that. Um, but it worked very well. And at the end of the day, at the end of both of their shifts, um, Anne and, and Joanne both had, had some recommendations for how to tweak, uh, tweak our procedures. And that's certainly something that we're going to be doing uh, over the next week as each of the new, uh, everybody comes in and starts, starts getting into, uh, uh, into uh, uh, back into, into work mode. Uh, we had uh, 22 people um, check out, so um, we had a, a nice steady stream uh, and not a deluge, which I feared. So a nice steady stream of things coming back in. Um, so it was, it was a good day. It was a real good day. Um, we had only positive vibes, um, only positive feedback from uh, the community members who uh, we got a chance to talk to. Everybody was really relieved to see us back open, and um, some of them were, were kind of emotional about it too. So it was a good day. Um, we. Uh, I just noticed you're actually in the library right now, Joe. I am. I am. Uh, yeah. I've I've been here for been here for twelve hours. I I, I probably put in. Well, it, last week was a long week too. Uh, I was here a lot. Um, but, uh, uh, last week, uh, training went really well, uh, with, uh, with all of the staff members. We went through all of the policies, uh, we made some minor tweaks to the, the procedures, um, as we sort of talked through it. Um, uh, and, but I, I am, uh, eternally grateful to the, uh, the staff for be, being willing to go with the flow and being open to the, you know, the idea that as as we go through the crucible of this this first week we'll we'll see what works and what doesn't and we'll change anything that needs to be changed in order to get it right it only works if we you know if, if this doesn't work for the community if it doesn't work for the staff then it doesn't work you know it doesn't matter how many things are coming in or going out if it doesn't work for the community and it doesn't work for the staff then it doesn't work if we're not maintaining health and maintaining safety um and maintaining that balance of access on the one hand and health and safety on the other, then, you know, um, then it doesn't work. But it works so far. I think we're doing all right. I have a, a quick question. So you sent out the, the approved procedures, and then you sent out a new procedures that looks like it's been tweaked. Does the, do the new procedures represent the tweaks that were made today? Or is this like an intermediate step? And at how often do we need to be approving the tweaks? Yep. Uh, so I, the, 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 the nomenclature is the thing, right? So on the one hand, we've got the reopening guidelines. So one of the two documents that I sent around was the reopening guidelines that we have. Um, uh, and that one is called uh, re Altamont Free Library reopening plan. So that is something, and it, it the the headline is Altamont Free Library post New York pause reopening guidelines. Um, it has a bullet list for prior to reopening. So that's the one thing that we all approved at our last meeting. Um, that has one change to it that um, had to do with it has one change since the last time that it was approved. And that had to do with guidance that we received about um, uh, the healthcare uh, or the, the, the health questionnaire. Um, so we, we received new guidance about uh, the, um, what, what we would have to ask, what we had to ask uh, our staff members at the beginning of each shift. Um, so it's in red mm -hmm. in the prior to opening um, section. It says staff members and essential visitors, including trustees and contractors, will be required to fill out, et cetera, et cetera. I sent around the form. Did I, did I send the form? 
I may not have sent the form. Okay, so no, I can. I'm not seeing anything in red. So this is the uh, post New York pause reopening guidelines Correct. that you're looking at. Uh, in step one, resuming collection and limited distribution of library materials. That's ah, okay. So not in prior to reopening in step one. Right. Okay. I uh, yeah, I, I was just saying that that was the, the headline okay. that, that you should be looking at. So if you see the red thing, that, that was something that, uh, that we had to add um, in order to meet the, the guidelines. So th this was something that we needed to uh, have the, the, board, um, the board approve um and have on file it doesn't say the, the state doesn't tell us where it has to be on file it just has to be a document that has been passed by the board um mm -hmm. that was uh, so that's that's what we did last time Since i would then, yeah, i would ahead. strongly recommend joe renaming this file post new york pause reopening guidelines okay because the other file is the, the one is also labeled, it's reopening procedures and safety plan. Yep. So both of the files actually use the word reopening and plan. Yeah. So I think just reverting to this document being New York pause reopening guidelines, and then the other document being curbside pickup and re return procedures, yeah, I think I, will help us keep this straight. I, Totally understood. I'm not a very creative namer of things, um, so those are the, so the so the the thing that we looked at last time and the thing that we're, that we're talking about now it was something that we needed to to pass. The procedures was how are we going to do this? How are we going to uh, go through our day? What are the step by step operations? Um, and uh, that's does that does that sort of make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, both have been working well. We've, we've, uh, the, the, the staff have both of them at hand. Um, we have, uh, uh, appealed to those, those policies and those procedures throughout the day. Um, and they seem to be working okay so far. Um, anything else on the, the reopening plans, the guidelines, the procedures, the workflows? I'm smiling. Do we need to vote? Go ahead. Do we need to vote on that change? I, I think it would probably be wise. Yeah, I think I think we should we could do that. Yeah. Okay, can we get a uh, motion then to accept the post New York pause reopening guidelines with the change that is noted in red that Joe has just described that came down from New York State. We move. Seconded. Thank you, Katie. All in favor? Aye. All, anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Rachel, that has passed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Elizabeth, you were saying? Um, I just, I was smiling at the fact that you used donning and doffing and. It's the, like, yeah, yeah. It, that was the correct, it's probably the correct term, but I just love it. Kudos. It is the correct term. It's the term that uh, is used in the technical literature on the subject of which uh, I have consumed quite a lot. Um, so uh, we also, we had uh, uh, Gilderland EMT come out um, a couple of weeks ago, along with uh, Supervisor Barber um, and uh, Gilderland uh, Library Supervisor uh, Tim Wiles, uh, we had a meeting amongst the, the, the bunch of us, and uh, you know we, we talked about we talked about a lot of things. Um, some of the health and safety procedures that they were describing would not don't don't necessarily slot into our operations. But um, but the donning and doffing were, were things that I, I specifically had them demonstrate for us, um, and uh, it was it was actually really useful. So, uh, hey Joe, can I just ask an, uh, maybe an unrelated question? But I, I drove past the Gilman Public Library today, and they have four little plastic houses in their driveway. Is that sure where they're do. storing their is that where they're storing their books until they get? Yeah, they came up with a. <laughs> Kind of looks like a. Sh uh, there was an art show at the uh, Mass Mocha a number of years ago with these really creepy houses in it. I um, saw that. Yes. And this is the first thing that went through my mind was, what the heck is this? I, I'm so glad that you described that as creepy because <laughs> it it really freaked the hell out of me. Um, uh, but yeah, so um, they've so what they've come up with. I don't know how. 
what they've come up with as a return procedure for materials is they have four sheds labeled A, B, C, and D. And on day one, you put your stuff in shed A. And on day two, so it, in order to keep things straight for the 72 hour um, nice. quarantine gotcha. that they have, um, they've instituted as, as we have, they're just having people fill up the shed um, and then the next day they'll move on to the next shed. This is the sort of thing that they can do. Um, we I get obviously it. can't. Just like composting. Huh. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, okay, so um, uh, what else? I'm sorry, I've lost my place. No, that's not it. There we go. Okay. Um, so today went well. Sexual harassment training. We uh, uh, had everybody do the sexual harassment training over the um, uh, over the, the the quarantine uh, or over the the the, the closure. Um, uh, five of the six frontline staff members completed that training um, and have uh, signed off and we have got that stuff on file. The other one will do it uh, by the time of their next shift and we will have completed that cycle for the year. Jason, I would uh, recommend that you do the same um, and uh, just get that back to, I, I guess, to Dan um, uh, for our files. Um, I will also reach out to Claudia, who's not a frontline staff member and who I rarely see but um, who does need to, uh, to take that training. So that's been going well. Um, the, uh, the, the, the second wave, I know it's a, it's a super big bummer to talk about it and think about it, but um, I think we can talk about it and think about it in, in these terms. Um, it would probably be wise of us amongst myself, the board, and the staff to put our heads together and think about what we've learned over the past three months and how we can use the lessons of the past three months uh, going forward. Um, in particular, um, in case that we, you know, in case we see a second wave of this in the fall, um, we, you know, it would probably be wise of us to have had that moment of reflection before this occurs again. Um, so, um, think, please, board members, if this is something that you would like to be a part of, um, it's, uh, I think it's going to be important. Okay. Does anybody have any thoughts about that, questions about that? So, are you suggesting that we get together at another time to specifically just address that, or do you want this to be part a, a large part of our next meeting or what what is in your head what do you what would you prefer you are the library director just in case you had forgotten um i think I, I mean i don't i don't necessarily feel like we need a separate committee but i do think that we need input from different constituencies that wouldn't necessarily be represented in a board meeting. So okay. in particular, I'm thinking about, you know, input from the staff. Okay. Um, I don't know. Let me think about it and I, I can, I can come back to you on that. Okay. All right. Um, unfortunately, summer concerts, uh, we are not going to be able to do this year, um, which is a, a huge bummer. It's one of my favorite things that we do. Um, um, I think that's probably all I specifically need to talk about. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, Joe, I just, I want to, again, commend you as always um, for the way you've, you've run the ship. Um, you've kept us afloat and you uh, are, are have, I'm so happy to hear that today went well. And I'm sure everybody on the board is, is equally as happy about that. So um, thank you again for everything you're doing. And um, 12 hours is a little bit much to be at the library though. Okay, not for nothing. All right, so, um, so may, may, maybe uh, maybe come in late tomorrow or something. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway.
We'll see. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Um, committee reports. I don't think there's much in, in the way of personnel or program. Um, the building committee, the, um, the alarm system update actually was supposed to be in the building committee, I believe, not in the finance committee. Uh, so easy, Elizabeth, you don't have to cover the alarm system. <laughs> so uh, do you want to talk at all? Anybody, Paul or Joe, about the uh, alarm system update? Oh, why don't you start on that? Okay. Um, well, it seems like the installation of our new alarm system is pretty much done. Um, what I can see that they've done is just very nice and neat and uh, very professional looking. Uh, they certainly are two nice uh, workers, Mike and Rich, who came. Um, um, it's not completely done, but I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's, is it, no joking to actually answer, is it actually functioning at this time? It's close to done, but there is a snag, um, and it has to do with uh, the existing system, the sprinkling system. Um, we were under the impression, uh, International Built-In was under the impression that um, everything that they needed would be there. And when they got there, they found out that uh, there was a compressor, air compressor that needed some kind of a monitoring device or switch. I can't remember exactly how it was described. And it was not there, so they could not tie into it. And um, they kind of indicated that that would, that, you know, we should go back and check our inspections that um, are done by, um, uh, Johnson Controls, who actually set up the sprinkler system, and see you know if they in fact have that on their uh, their inspection list, uh, because uh, in their uh, in the opinion of IBS, and they're very careful about how they worded it, but they suggested that that's something that should have been there, and we not and uh, because at this point, conceivably for them for Johnson Controls to come in and install this so that uh, International Built-In can then complete their work it could cost us a few hundred uh, more dollars which you know was unanticipated so they thought that we had a case to say you know this really should have been there um, so maybe you should uh, you know either put it in gratis or you know give it give us a reduced uh, rate to actually install this as an after fact um, so specifically about that, Joe, did you have any other um, thoughts about it or uh, recollections? No, the other, um, I, I mean, that's, yeah, no, I, I didn't have any other thoughts on that, but the, there was the other piece um, that they thought ought to have been there, but wasn't, which is that something like two years ago, we uh, had installed um, a water gong, um, which uh, we didn't have Johnson do that. We had Albany Fire Protection do that. So a, a separate contractor. And uh, this was a device that was meant to uh, uh, cause an alarm if our flow switch, if the, if the, um, if, if there was a leak or if the, the, um, there was a, uh, if, if water was flowing through our sprinkler system, which would indicate either a leak or that the, the, it had been triggered, that the, the, the sprinklers had been triggered. Um, but that alarm does not, did not work um, and wasn't receiving electrical power. So that was another uh, uh, major finding uh, of theirs. I mean, it, it was, it was, it was just installed two years ago. Um, so I, I, I am at a loss to explain how that might have been, how it, it, the, how it, it might have been that the person installed the, the thing and it was, you know, it was big and prominent and red and, uh, it was in the, uh, the, the, the storage room. Uh, and it never apparently worked. Now I remember, I remember I was here and I remember it being tested and it worked then, but now 
when they go to, to um, they, they went to go move it to the exterior of the building, they found that it had no power to it. So I, I don't know. Wow. Um, so we'll work those issues out. And I've asked Laura Kenny, who's the uh, mom uh, who runs the business in many ways, international built-in that is, uh, to provide us just with a, a, a list of um, oh, how-tos and reminders and just an overview so that I have a better grasp on it. Uh, they did a quick run through with Joe and I about how to turn alarms off and what's going to happen, you know, who's going to be called if there is an alarm, gave us a code and so on and so forth. Um, but by and large, it's, it's went well. There's always uh, some small snag that can, uh, you know, happen. Um, so so is, that, uh, is it safe to assume then that we are then hooked up to the fire department and emergency personnel will respond when the alarm goes off? That's my understanding. As cool. of the, yeah, as of the end of the first day of construction last Tuesday, um, it, it's, it's, it's up and running. It's wow. being it's it's being monitored, um, and uh, as as far as they're concerned, with the exception of the alarm component that is is hooked into that air compressor, that's the only remaining piece that needs to okay. that that needs to be sorted out. Uh, Paul, I don't know if you knew, but Rick Grant was here yesterday. Oh, um, to do the, to the, to do the, did you know that? No. Okay. Well, he did the last bit on the, uh, on the flow switch alarm. Um, so that's okay. now, that's now, uh, hooked up. Okay. Um, and part of what Rick Grant did was put a nice, uh, strobe, uh, light strobe and alarm on the outside of the building. Um, so that the fire department, um, if there's a visual out there that indicates that there's been an alarm and it indicates where they can hook up their water. Um, so it's that big improvement all in all. Um, so unless, if there's not any questions about this project, uh, I'll just mention one or two other small things. Um, so I, think, I think that's wonderful. Uh, I'm just going to add, you know, Everybody can sleep a little bit easier now at night, <laughs> knowing that the professionals will respond. And that's just fantastic. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Joe, for all the background work you all did to make this happen. So you're welcome. Very welcome. Um, and what just one other item, the railings have been painted. They were pretty rusty at the base. Um, and uh, they're not perfect because there was quite a bit of pitting but they are nice and solidly green again. Um, so, um, if you didn't, if you didn't know to look for that, it, no, they look perfect, Paul. They yeah. really do. Thank you. Are oh, you welcome? Um, so maybe at a, at a building committee meeting um, in a couple weeks, we can discuss a couple of other things. Um, the chimney cap, which I've got another lead on, uh, getting the chimney cap back in place, and. Um, the washing or and or painting of the library, which um, I won't go into detail about because I think it's really something that we can just manage in the building committee and then okay. discuss at a later time at a board meeting. Great. Anybody have any questions for Paul and or Joe with regards to the building? He also, uh, Paul also finished the uh, uh, the the renovation of the uh, the back room the storage space uh, oh wow it, it looks phenomenal um, so thank you Paul thank you thank Sam. you so much you're welcome thank you. and Joe has certainly assisted on that he uh, put part of the um, shelving together himself and he um, I assume it was just you Joe that put everything that was in the a community room back onto those shelves, which was a, looked like a formidable task. Yeah, it was the pits. <laughs> so is the, has that been, I, I, I'm being ridiculous here and I apologize in advance, but is, um, is that now an office space for you, Joe, or for the staff? It, 
it has a desk in it, a small. Oh, very he's walking. Desk. He's walking to it. Oh, look at this. <laughs> 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 oh look at this oh my gosh wow a lot of stuff in there <laughs> amazing amazing <laughs> joe where are the fish poles <laughs> <laughs> there they are <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Paul, fantastic. Thanks so much. That is amazing. You're very welcome. <laughs> Guided tour. <laughs> I did not see a hammock, though, for your 12 hour days, Joe. <laughs> it's going to be a loft. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Anybody else have any comments or questions for the Finance Committee report? All right. There was, uh, not Finance, the Building Committee. I'm sorry. The Policy Committee did not meet. Long range planning did not meet. Um, so we're back to Finance. And we're going to turn it over to Elizabeth, who's going to talk to us about um, the documents that she sent to us. Yes. So, um... First, I want to mention that there's uh, no pressure on deciding anything tonight. This is primarily, I just wanted to give kind of a, a, a recap of what the Finance Committee talked about and then um, open it for discussion to the board. Um, and so the, a little bit of history behind this is that uh, we, as, as a nonprofit, we actually have a, um, between healthy and potentially more than healthy, um, amount of uh, cash um, that uh, that we have. So through a, a combination of a really you know supportive uh, community um, and uh, and wise spending on our part, um, we we have quite a bit in both savings and in CDs. And so there are many reasons that we would want to. Uh, to do something with this, um, because right now we're we're afraid that if you know any of our our donors or, or governments would uh, would be looking for a reason to uh, cut back on on what they give, they would just look at our accounts and say, "Well, you don't need the money. Uh, look at all this stuff you've got." And so, what we have been uh, kind of pondering uh, for the last few years uh, since since I've been on the board is what are the different options that we can use this money for? Um, and there were a lot of ideas tossed out um, and those were included in the, the spreadsheet that was sent. Um, and one of the things that we spent the most time talking about was something called a, a quasi-endowment um, in uh, in New York law and in a, a lot of other places, um, something called a true endowment is when a donor gives you stock uh, or something and says that you can't ever spend this, but feel free to use your earnings um, off of it. Um, and that's, that's not really the situation we're looking at. Um, instead, uh, a quasi endowment is something that the board votes on to set aside a certain amount of cash aside um, and keep it for purposes that they spell out. And then in order to access it again, then it either is doled out according to the policy or if they want to, it's called raid the, the quasi endowment, that's kind of a bad, like that makes it sound kind of cavalier, but but if they ever want to spend the, 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 the principal, the corpus of the money that's there, um, then they have to vote um, in order to, to do that. So what it does is it allows us to show to anyone that's interested that in fact there is a plan for this money. It's, it's not us being flush with cash, it's us setting aside money for a particular purpose. Um, and so there are kind of, uh, there are two stages of decision-making. One is what to do with 
uh, the cash, such as set up a quasi endowment or set up a scholarship or just leave everything where it is. Um, and then there's the how to manage it kind of step. And so you have actually sample policies set out for both of those steps. One of which is a policy for what it would look like if we actually wanted to set up a quasi endowment. And then something that we didn't talk about very much at the finance meeting, but I realized in drafting the, the draft uh, uh, quasi endowment statement that we would actually need a policy for how to manage the investments. So there's, so there's kind of two decisions. One, what do we do with it? And then once we decide what to do with it, um, how to actually store the money. So we could decide, um, or I guess y'all could decide since this is my last meeting, um, to, to set up a quasi endowment. And then once you make that decision, that's kind of, that determines the rules for how we spend the money. But then the finance committee still needs to decide how to store that money. Now, right now, we've got it sitting in a savings account, which earns less than um, inflation, um, and three CDs that are extremely short term. So there were uh, a couple of recommendations kind of bounced around on how to store the money, which I actually think, based on our discussion, is going to be a more complicated decision than um, what to do on the first step. But CDs um, are uh, a relatively safe investment um, um, and potentially setting staggered maturities so that they're not all maturing at once on a super short term kind of basis uh, would, would, would be a, an idea that, uh, that we talked about. Um, and so you'll, you'll notice in the investment policy that uh, a couple things were mentioned uh, specifically and if you want to take a look at the draft investment policy, um, you'll notice that we have uh, mentioned, aside from just straight up uh, cash, that uh, treasury bills and notes are okay, CDs are okay. Um, the only thing that was different than most of the kind of sample policies that I found um, was an investment in a local uh, community loan fund. Um, this is something where it's not designed to maximize like our returns, um, but it's a way to invest in the community. Um, since the finance meeting, I have reached out to uh, the director of the uh, Capital Region Community Loan Fund um, she and some of her staff have responded back um, saying essentially that they do have nonprofits as investors and they sent us some materials that I'll circulate to the board. Um, this is investment in the community loan fund is probably something that you would want to do in conjunction with uh, the sustainability committee because it's not just about um, getting the money back, and there is potentially a little bit of, uh, of risk to it, but it is in, um, it is a community investment. So it, it may still be in line with our mission if we decided that we wanted to spend part of our money on that. Um, so, so I will be sending out more materials on, um, on, on what it would look like for uh, the Altamont Library to, to invest money in the community loan fund. Um, but uh, but so, so that's all the, the material that I sent out. Um, the Excel sheet really is just, uh, I would say the minutes uh, almost from, from our meeting where it's uh, our kind of collected thoughts on the issue, um, the two draft policies and what else did I send you? Oh yeah, and the, the little article on um, what a quasi-endowment actually was. Um, so, so we don't need to make any decisions tonight, but I am happy to entertain any questions um, that um, uh, y'all might have in order to kind of move the discussion forward um, on this. The, in terms of timeline, um, we don't need to 
Like I said, don't need to decide anything tonight. I would recommend having things decided by the time uh, the CDs come up for maturity, which is in September. So good discussion tonight, maybe voting on the policies at the next meeting so that the finance committee can decide how they want to uh, uh, tweak the CDs or switch over to something else, but so that the finance committee would be able to actually handle decisions on the investments before the CDs actually came up for renewal um, in September. So that would be my, my recommended timeline. And Joe, you had a uh, question or you wanted to kick off the discussion? Uh, maybe both. Um, so I, I just had one quick point of clarification. Mm -hmm. um, and this is on the quasi endowment policy. Yes. The, 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 the draft. Um, in section eight, quasi endowment funds may be of two general types. So <clears throat> I thought the way that we were talking about it, that we would not put restricted funds into the quasi endowment. Um, I'm also struggling, by the way, between quasi and quasi. Um, uh, but, uh, but maybe, maybe that's a, 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 another discussion. So uh, th when it says that we, we could include restricted funds, uh, the Mary Jo Doherty fund, for example, um, in our quasi endowment, I, I didn't think that that was something that we were talking about. This isn't so much about reclassifying what we already have as much as communicating to people who may be interested in uh, donating to us that they can in fact specify that funds can go into the quasi endowment. Got it. So anyone that is, and even if it is in a separate fund, and, and Jason, you might need to step in on this, we can have existing funds like that are separate funds in our bank account still be considered part of our quasi endowment for, uh, for, I want to say record keeping purposes, but, um, but I don't know if we would want to right now. I think that the quasi endowment would be best kept separately as its own thing. What are your thoughts, Jason? Yeah, I agree. I think it would be best to keep it separate just for ease of reporting. Cause like in a lot of the bigger nonprofits, the true endowments will actually have gifts from a whole bunch of people that won't say we want to give to the endowment. They'll just say, here, here's stock, don't spend it. Sure. Um, and it ends up being essentially labeled as, as endowment. Correct. Yep. That's what Canjo has because they have a, about a $5 million endowment that they have to keep track of. So come audit time, of course, we have to break down, you know, out of these million dollars, there's certain bequests and different things that we have to essentially spread out the interest that's earned over the year as well. It gets a little complicated. <laughs> the Kennedy Harry Library has a $5 million endowment? Yep. Or is that for the museum too? Well, it's, yeah, combined. Yep. It's from Arkell. Wow. Yep. So, so the good news is we don't have to do a lot of that. There's a lot of complicated accounting and reporting that comes with having a true endowment. And, and, and meeting all of those, um, uh, those uh, requirements on restricted gifts. We don't have to deal with, with any of that. Um, but, uh, but, but this policy, essentially what I, what I noticed in the policies delineating quasi endowments and, and things like that, it's more, it reads more like instructions for how money goes in and how money comes out. What you actually do with the money when it's in there, that's the investment policy. So in our policy, we talk about how money, the different ways that money can come in. Um, and then our kind of brief regulation are on the spending of it. Um, so most of it is regulations on money that comes in. Something I thought was interesting was the um, specific power to say no to things. Um, 
which is, uh, I think, useful to kind of have spelled out um, for, for potential donors. Um, so this is, this is almost more for potential donors who are interested in, uh, in giving uh, gifts to the quasi-endowment or giving us gifts that we then might put in the quasi-endowment um, more so than, uh, I would say, logistical stuff um, for managing the money, which is in the investment policy. I have a question, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. So at this point now, all of our, uh, it's basically CDs, that's where we're getting whatever income from our um, you know, fluid investments is, is that correct that it's mostly, and it's not, and it, whatever that amount of money is, it's not a huge amount. It's not money that we depend on in our budget, but it's just money that we are accruing at a, at a slow rate. Yeah, and I would say it's actually, it's, it's part CDs, but it's also the savings. Like I do think that we should, I mean, and, and whether or not and how much we have in a separate savings account separate from our checking, because right now we have about $72,000 in the CDs, but we have $80,000 in savings. So it's probably too much to have in savings. Whether or not we continue to have a, a proper savings account will depend on how the finance committee decides to um, allocate the, the investment policy. Um, so it could be that we decide to keep a savings account. We just might keep 20 grand in there and then take the rest of the money and split it amongst different maturities of, of CDs. Um, but, but we have about $150,000 um, that we are not relying on for operational expenses. So we should, we should be purposeful about our plans for that money without, I think, especially now because the many governments um, may find themselves on hard times next year. Um, so, so we don't want to make all of that money totally inaccessible. Like we shouldn't just go out and, you know, you know, 10 year uh, CDs the whole way to, to maximize our investment. I would, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, because because we could see some cuts to our budget, um, especially our, our municipal funding next year. So it, we should have stuff accessible. Um, but but I do think that with 150 grand um, of of non operating cash, we need to at least have a a plan for it. And um, do we have a checking account with that we keep a substantial sum in? I mean, so, or, or do we just go and um, add um, you know funds to that as we need it so we're not uh, anyway do do we have a, a checking account that we keep a substantial amount in as well that's my question yes we have um looking at the the balance sheet we have a hundred and twenty dollars or one hundred twenty thousand dollars in checking and so on most of my my tenure on the board are spending and our revenue has flowed in and out of of this um to my knowledge we have never transferred out of savings okay. um since i've been here but we also haven't put any into mm -hmm. savings um so so it's always been um ebb and flow just out of checking okay one just quick question too our Mutual funds not fluid enough to um, you know to be considered part of a quasi endowment. Whether y'all decide to invest in mutual funds ends up being an investment policy decision. They're also kind of safe, but they're not as safe as CDs. So it ends up becoming a a risk tolerance and investment decision um, on the board's part. Um, I didn't see very many library investment policies that contain mutual funds, mm -hmm. but I did see them in larger organizations like universities. They did, um, probably because they're, they're more risk tolerant. 
Um, so that would end up being uh, a decision of, of the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Oh. Anybody else have any other questions for Elizabeth? So I know that this is a lot, I mean, this, this is not pleasure reading, uh, <laughs> except for like, people like me. Um, so, so even though I won't be a part of, of the board anymore, and I'm like choking up just saying that, um, feel free as you read the materials um, over, over the next month and get ready to potentially vote on it at the next board meeting, always feel free to, to reach out and, uh, and ask questions. Um, I'm happy to serve as, as a resource. And uh, like I told Joe in my exit interview, um, it's, it's amazing how financially healthy um, y'all are. It's, it's, it's a, a real treat being able to even have this conversation, especially um, right now. Uh, there are there are a lot of organizations that are um, not not in a good spot, but through um, through a lot of factors, um, we've we found ourselves in a, continuing to be in a really good situation. So um, so if y'all have any questions moving forward on this, um, please feel free to reach out. Well, thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you for all your efforts these years. Um, you know we are going to miss you, and we we wish you well in. Houston, Dallas, where are you going again? Dallas, Dallas from Houston, okay. but, but headed to Dallas. Headed so. to Dallas. Well, we wish you well, and, and thank you so much for all the time and effort. And um, I look forward to it. You're right, it's not easy reading, but I look forward to the discussions we're going to have in the very near future about this. And um, um, because it, it, it's, it's, it's our future, and that's, I mean, our, it's our library's future that we have to be thinking about. And so it just makes sense to do so. so. And I don't know if y'all know, but Joe put together the most beautiful picture of Altamont for me in a really, really gorgeous frame. And it was, it was absolutely fantastic. So it, it oh. meant a lot. So thank you so much, Joe. Cool, very nice. Does anybody have anything else for Elizabeth? Only gratitude. Okay. What's that again? Only gratitude. Only gratitude, indeed, indeed. All right, well, not hearing anything else. Um, Joe, you had one more thing, right? There was gonna be new business? Or have we already covered it? No, we haven't. It occurred to me on Friday, um, after unfortunately I'd wrapped up uh, our conversation with, um, with Elizabeth, um, otherwise I would have run it by her. Um, but that it might behoove us to save some money and. Um, one way that we could potentially do that would be to um, have a, um, a financial review rather than a full audit this year. We've had full audits for the past, um, I believe it's four years running. Uh, prior to 2016, we did, uh, and this goes back to before my time, um, but we did uh, audits every other year. Um, and reviews. So audit review, audit review. It may have even been two reviews followed by an audit, one audit every three years, one full audit every three years. Um, you know, we've, we've been, our, our books have been pretty boring, um, due in large part to Jason and Mila before him, and, and uh, but especially uh, Elizabeth. Um, and <sighs> Uh, you know, the, the, the year that they would be reviewing, 2019, I don't think was a particularly action-packed year. And so if we were to do it any year, I mean, it might make sense to do it for, for next year. The last time that we asked um, uh, Bixby about the cost difference between review and audit, it was about a $2,000 difference. Uh, $2,000 for a review, $4,000 or so for uh, for an audit, for a full audit. Um, so I just wanted to sort of take take folks' temperature on, on, on that idea. So there's nothing in our bylaws that says we have to have an audit then every year? No, it the, the guidance that 
I, I remembered having gotten from, from Tim Burke at Upper Hudson was that at a minimum, once every other year would be, uh, would be, would be best. Um, but that if you have the financial resources to do it every year, then that's, that's okay. obviously the gold standard. Okay. Does anybody have any thoughts or comments about what Joe is proposing? Yes, I have. Go ahead, Paul. Okay. Um, the, um, so a review um, <clears throat> doesn't satisfy the uh, Upper Hudson guidelines um, in, um, in perpetuity. I mean, you would have to at some point have an actual audit. Is that my is that the correct understanding? Yeah, if, if we had if we did a review this year, then we would do an audit next year for sure. Okay. But maybe you know, maybe next year, because next year is potentially going to be a tougher budget year, maybe next year is uh, a year that we save money by by doing a or, or maybe we don't do that at all and just keep rolling with the review with an audit every year. I you know, it's it's I'm just trying to. I like the idea of saving two thousand dollars. I think that makes a lot of sense, especially <laughs> since things are so even with the library. <clears throat> right. And remind me, Jason, we had an unqualified opinion last year. Yeah, I believe so. Everything was clean. Okay. So I think that this, in in my own opinion, I think that this year would be a good year to, to do the review um, for a couple of reasons. One, because our, you know, our inflow of, of, of cash is going to be slightly down. Uh, two, because we did have several years where for numerous reasons, we decided to do full audits. And um, so after a couple years of having very eventful years, um, this, you know, 2019 was, was relatively uneventful. Um, I also think uh, that that we need to change auditors just because we've had this one for a while. So doing a review with them um, would uh, for this year, I think is fine. And that way we can have a new auditor do a full audit the next year. And I think that would, that would make sense. Okay. It's kind of easing our way out of Bixby by doing it this way to some extent. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I did reach out to uh, to Bixby to get a um, yeah, just a rundown from Glenn Winter of uh, the differences between uh, an audit and a review. What he sent me was probably fine, but it seems a little bit weighted in favor of audit over review. Um, so Elizabeth, if you could just um, just I don't know if you're prepared to do this, but just sort of run down the differences between the two. I can't. I'm sorry. Okay. No, fair <laughs> enough. That's fine. That's fine. Jason, um, you, do, you, are, do you have anything on this? But I can't. No, I mean, pretty much any place that I've done you know, work for has always been full audits. We really never had a just a review. It's always been full audit. Yeah. Okay. I will send around what, uh, what Glenn Winter sent to us, and maybe we can... Uh, vote on this in the uh, at the next meeting. Okay, that or, makes I, sense. Yeah, yep. I would I would review to make sure that none of our municipal funding requires us to have a full audit. Um, quite often, that's that's one of the reasons why most of the organizations that I've worked with have full audits, not because they've got a whole bunch of cash laying around, but because one or more of their funders require a full audit as uh, as a condition of funding. Um, we don't really I know that we did reviews before, but let's just be sure that we're not that we didn't before overlook um, some of the funding criteria. That would be the only reason that I would urge a full audit is if we we are required to have one. Otherwise, I don't. I I'm, don't I'm trying to think of what where that would be laid out. Because yeah, I mean, we, we don't have a formal written agreement with either the village of Altamont or the town of Gilderland. Um, so w where, where would we find that stipulation? I don't think you want to ask them either, honestly. <laughs> 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 you, do, you don't want to open that can of worms with anybody. Right. Um, 
Okay, I, I, I will I will dig into it. Um, I will dig into it. That is, I mean, that actually I, is a good that is, that is a good question because we it's have not nothing like, in writing from anyone. We're not like filling out any requests for proposals or anything. Like there, there there's no grant portal. There there's none of that. We're just like a quasi municipal body that gets money. So I, I have no idea. I'm curious when you find out if there are any rules where those might be stored because I honestly don't know. <laughs> Me too. Okay, well, we can talk about that next time. Joe gets a little bit more information for us. And uh, now, speaking of next time, and traditionally we have not done a July meeting, is that correct? That's correct. Are we sticking with that protocol this year, or would you prefer to have a July meeting? I, I, I mean, I mean, given what we're going to, maybe it makes sense to <clears throat> to meet in July just to see how things are going. So, so here's here's the here's here's my thought on that. Um, in our directors meeting on uh, Monday, we sort of went around the proverbial room, and it seemed like fifty to seventy five percent of libraries. Um, in Upper Hudson are thinking about bringing the public back into their buildings um, in July. Many of them are thinking about doing it right after the July 4th holiday. I think that's nuts. <laughs> I just think that's crazy. <sighs> but it might that's be like three weeks away. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So I don't I don't see it. I don't I don't see us needing to to talk about that. I don't see that as being a conversation that can't wait until uh August. By the time we do have that discussion though in the third week in August, we might, you know, we might be behind the eight ball. So um so I don't Why know. Why don't we just have a July meeting then? Okay, well, uh, so why don't we say this? Why don't we plan on having a July meeting, and then if we get to we get close to it, and we find that there's not yeah, enough yeah. there's not enough discussion points to justify okay. having the meeting, um, and if you know people are traveling so that we can't get a quorum. Um, yeah, well, that's the other thing. If people could look at their calendars and let us know sooner than later that you wouldn't be available on July 20th, which is the date I have down here on our agenda. Yep. Um, that would give us an idea as to whether or not that meeting could take place in the first place anyway. So does that make sense for everybody? I'll send out a, I'll send out a, uh, a message to the board just uh, okay. uh, uh, yeah, asking uh, for the folks who, uh, who aren't uh, joining us. OK. Cool. All right. Well, again, before we close, I just want to, again, thank Elizabeth for all your time, all your effort. It's been a pleasure working with you. And, um, and, and we, we, we're so lucky to have board members like all you folks are, I, honest to God. Um, you all in your own way make this library what it is, which is just a phenomenal institution for this little village. So, so thank you all. And uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? So Thanks, moved. Elizabeth. <laughs> Seconded. Thank you, Paul. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We're done. Enjoy your evening. Thank, Thank you, Elizabeth. You Thank Thanks, you all. Elizabeth. Thanks. Great work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>